Yeah, sure, Becky, make a ball gown. That'll that'll be fun and easy, and totally useful in your life. I have nothing else to do. It's been 14 weeks of lockdown. It's really hot today. It's supposed to get up to 30 degrees, and I just feel like my makeup is melting off my face. Also, don't do vintage hair in this heat, because you've got your arms up here, you get sweaty, you have to use heated tools. That's the best advice I can give you right now. Hello! Welcome to this little corner of the internet. If you're not new, welcome back. Thank you for coming back. I have kind of fallen in love with the world of cosplay, Disney bounding, and history bounding. And I wanted to give it a proper go. Make something a bit more fantastical than what I've been making previously, which were just kind of normal, well, normal for a hobbit, um, clothes. I've been having a good, just good old scroll through. People make amazing things and I have, I do have to limit my expectations for myself a little bit because I know that what I really want to make is something that would cost thousands of pounds and take hours and hours and hours and we're not there yet. Little disclaimer here, I've been watching so many people on YouTube who are incredibly talented costumers who've obviously had training in this area, who are artists and historians and I really, really respect what they do and I would love to get to that standard one day. Um, this is not that at the moment, this is just me prattling about with some fabric and a sewing machine. So I'm really sorry if I do anything that is not technically correct or it's absolutely not going to be historically accurate. Please don't come for me. So in between applying for jobs, which would then give me the money to make something fantastical and massive and very impractical, I thought I would look through my sewing stash because I can't go to the fabric shop at the moment and try and make something just out of what I've got in the house. I've had this fabric for about probably over a decade now, some of it, and it's way more eco-friendly to use what you've got than to order fabric off the internet. So, with that in mind, I found some rose printed fabric that when I showed my nan she said, oh are those your mum's curtains? They're not, but I can see where she was coming from with that. I'm just looking at the fabric over there. I've seen so many like gorgeous, super talented people making Beauty and the Beast costumes, either inspired by the live action remake or the original film and I have to admit Belle is probably one of my favourite Disney princesses. That feels weird to say that at 23 but you know what, life's too short, I like Disney. I was thinking well instead of doing Belle, because I don't have anything that's yellow and I don't have enough kind of thick pink fabric to make a kind of Christmas dress, why don't I make something based on the Enchanted Rose? You can interpret it a little bit more loosely, um, I didn't want to do anything too literal. So I suppose this is my first foray into Disney bounding and of course I've made it so easy for myself because I've decided to make the entire thing from scratch without pattern. So I thought I'd just take you along, this is by no means a tutorial, this is very much just me cataloguing my many mistakes and learning curves on the way to becoming a better sewist. Right, because I always used to use the word seamstress or dressmaker, but apparently that's got really sexist undertones, so sewist? Sewer? I know for a fact, because I'm filming this halfway through the process, that I am missing the footage at the start of me making the pattern for this. I handmade the pattern, I drafted it, I didn't even have like a template like I did with the waistcoat and I can safely say it's so much easier to do these things with a pattern. It's taken me so much extra time and it's not perfect, however, I Given I didn't use a pattern, I'm quite happy with the top of it. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you're making, and if you're making anything, and how your lockdown is going. I really appreciate the fact that people are, are watching these, and I hope that they are bringing you some sort of entertainment, or just, just you know, company to have on in the background. That's what I've been doing a lot, just to keep me sane, and slightly, um, 
comforted and if me waffling away in the background helps at all then I have done my job. It means the world to me that anyone would want to watch them. And I was thinking if we can get to 100 subscribers on here, just 100, I'm currently on 92, I will make a video requested by the 100 of you plus anyone on Instagram who um, is watching and that could be anything from like uh, never have I ever totally honest Q&A um, to a sewing challenge, something about books. I am open to your suggestions. I want this to be a space where I am doing this for you. As much as I love this, this is my hobby, you guys are watching and I think you deserve the content you want to see. And while I've got nothing to do other than this and job applications, that's another suggested thing if you want to know what the job application process is like at the moment and how I'm getting through it. Yeah, I'm very open to suggestions and absolutely thrilled that anyone is watching these. So again, thank you. I love you all. You are wonderful. This will be part one of a two-part series. The skirt is still causing me issues and I just think that it would be better to break this down into two sections rather than one. And I will do the kind of reveal at the end. Here's, here's the sewing vlog. Right, so ignoring the terrible mess everywhere, I just want to come up and show you this is what we've got so far. The reason I've come up is because I've cut the pieces out for the... So this is actually the lining, which is why it's a bit more messy. Um, I've cut the pieces out for the more considered outer of the bodice. Around here, I have a bit of a conundrum with the pieces downstairs. Because I'm trying to work out how this bit fits together based on the pattern. So I'm going to take this off the dummy, take it downstairs and try and puzzle that one out. So what I've managed to do is pin them right sides facing, put one of the pieces upside down, which means the whole thing doesn't really fit. So I've now got to unpin it, flip one of them around, and do it all again. And now we unpick everything we just tapped. Right, 
So this is the point we're at with the corset mm -hmm. top bit of this dress. I have sewn it all together, it is currently inside out, pinned right sides facing, and I've just cut out, I'll come around here and show you, I've just cut out a bit of sort of interfacing that when you iron it, it sticks, so that when I turn it the other way out, I can then iron the front panel and it should stiffen it nicely. It fits, it's a little bit big on the back so I'm going to have to trim that down so that when I put the eyelets in for the lacing that it actually does up sort of like that. But so far so good. It's the right way out and it's ironed. Now, that's looking pretty good on the shape. I'm quite happy with how that sits. That sits. But if you come around here, you can see the back overlaps. Now what we want to do is work out how much we need to trim down with seam allowance to turn this in on itself. So that I can put some eyelet holes on either side. That mean that we can lace it up. And then it's just anything I want to do to the top just to embellish it. Because although the fabric is quite heavily patterned, the finished thing actually looks quite plain. I think I can do something else with it. So yeah, that's the plan. So on the dressmaker's dummy, I kind of calculated how much I would need to take this out. You caught that on camera. How much I need to take this in by, oh, it's bleeding. To make this the right width to then lace it up. So what I'm gonna do is just measure, I think it's about an inch. Um, leave half an inch seam allowance so I can turn it in and then just chop off any excess. And what I'm going to do is do a line of stitching just right up the end of the outer seam and then another line, oh I really am bleeding, up here as well to create a little channel for all of the holes, <laughs> lacing holes is what I'm going to call them, lacing holes. That's bang on an inch, look. I turn that over so you can see the big. How good is that? Ow. That blasted pin. This is what keeps stabbing me. Dangers of this hobby. Right. Does anyone else, when they've got a sewing project, kind of forget that this is supposed to be fun? It's just getting a bit stressed about getting this straight and perfect and oh god, what if it doesn't look the way I imagined it to? Because this is kind of a project straight out of my brain onto paper. Um, and I kind of just had to check myself and go, hang on a minute, this is supposed to be fun. I know the stab wound doesn't help convey that, but... This is supposed to be fun and it's kind of okay if it's not perfect because this is just playtime. This I'm doing lots of job applications at the moment and nothing's biting and that for me is work. This is supposed to be fun and it needs to stay fun. So I just need to take a deep breath, acknowledge that my finger is still throbbing and just chill out a bit. It'll be fine. It will be fine. So I've just pinned in place the kind of position that the ribbon's going to go in just to get a feel of how much I need and we've definitely got too much but I'm pretty pleased with that. This feels very counterintuitive and wrong but it has to be done otherwise it won't lace up. So here I am just poking holes in my work. This is the end of part one. Just need to sew the rest of those eyelet holes. Thank you for watching and I will bring part two to you as soon as I possibly can. 
uh, synthetic material. I don't know whether to take this makeup off now because it's just so hot. I don't know. I quite like it. I'm tempted to film the video, but I don't know what. Oh, I know what I can do. Yeah.